work and would willingly swap places. Well, Paul McMullen, um, you, you mentioned Hugh Grant, which you alluded to earlier. I mean, in conversation yeah. with, with the actor, which uh, uh, he turned the tables on you, didn't he? He, he actually secretly, secretly he recorded you. And I gather he did, he, yeah. you said to him, it all started off as fun. It wasn't against the law, so why wouldn't you? Uh, this, this is completely true. I mean, when I started under Piers Morgan, I remember you could buy a scanner in the shop uh, when phones were in analogue. They were just going digital throughout the 80s into the 90s. But the analogue scanners, you could park outside Buckingham Palace and listen to Prince Charles on his mobile talking to his mistress. Do you remember those tapes? How great were they? And also Diana talking to one of her lovers. What was that squidgy tape? Um, so they, those were the good old days. I mean, you could literally happily scan everyone it was perfect only became illegal in 98 and then um they really tightened it up in 2001 but well i mean you mentioned it became so uh, it became illegal then but was there no talk on the editorial floor there about the morality of what you were doing uh no i, I think the general view is that if you're a, a star and you've got a publicist and you hire a publicist to get you into the movies in any way possible, to get you into magazines in any way po possible, to get you into the newspapers in any way possible. You've got no real justification to bang on about your privacy. Um, so that was just fair game. And if you sit on a features desk at a national newspaper in the UK, uh, I was deputy features editor, the phone rings all the time from publicists and, you know, uh, stars themselves saying, oh, you know, can I be in the paper? And it's shocking the total lack of morality uh, of the people who want to be in the paper. I mean, 20 years ago, uh, a girl would have been ashamed to have admitted she slept with, you know, her her brother's uh, or husband's brother but these days they're you know strutting down the street going oh he's a premiership footballer look what I've done but not look Paul what, Mellon, am, what um, are these techniques likely to be employed by other newspapers at the moment or, or at least in the past um, well I mean I've worked for uh, in my time I worked for the Sun the news of the world and the Sunday Express um, and uh, the Sunday Express didn't actually. Um, they're very clean. Uh, I, I, I don't really want to point the finger because uh, I am, although I have bought a, a bar down in Dover called the Castle Inn. Please pop in. Um, uh, Hugh Grant forgot to pay for his beer. It's only three quid a pint and he walked out without paying. What an outrage. Anyway. Um, so I've lost my train of thought there. What was the initial question? Well, look, I'm, I'm asking have other papers or do other papers oh, yeah. use um, these techniques? Uh, yeah, well, the, part of the idea of me buying a pub, I had this daft idea that I was going to run a news agency from a pub, but it's kind of gone a bit awry as any idea to run a, an office from a pub might. Um, so I, I am still a freelance journalist, and I don't want to dump on the... Uh, I mean, Rebecca Brooks is not going to be hiring me anytime soon, I doubt. I've possibly ended my career in the last three days, so I'm not going to point the finger at other newspapers, but clearly you're spot on, yeah. Well, well let's, let's just, see maybe uh, if you can world. offend some, some other people up the food chain. I mean, how far does this reach up the chain of management, do you, do you believe? I mean, would, for instance, would Rupert Murdoch be aware of what was going on? Well, funnily enough, I mean, I've only met him once, and uh, he's uh, strangely almost puritanical. I'd give you an example, if you like. Um, when uh, Hugh Grant first came to our attention for cruising Sunset Boulevard looking for prostitutes and then getting caught with one in his car and convicted. Do you remember that sign when he had the uh, police thing on his chest? Um, our American team, it was Features, I was part of the Features team that did it, um, got Divine Brown, the prostitute, and we were so pleased, you know, we thought Rupert will be so pleased with this. We found Hugh Grant's hooker, put it on the front page. Um, we, we're expecting a call of uh, congratulations, well done. And he was going, gee, mate, isn't this a bit tacky? And I thought, oh, blimey. I mean, that it's almost a conflict that, um, you know, were called the news of the screws. I mean, do, does the master not realise what we do? Um, so, the, I don't know. I guess we were making a lot of money and uh, the editor has free reign, a free hand, until she does something as stupid as... Uh, you know, bringing the... I mean, when I first got a job at News of the World in 94, I was so proud uh, to tell people this. I mean, I was well paid, had a good salary, and then I got promoted, and that was great. But for about the last week, you know, 
I wouldn't tell anyone. It's, uh, I'm almost a bit ashamed to be associated with a paper that hacked into the victims of, you know, 7-7. I mean, it would be the equivalent of, uh, I don't know, the, would it be the Bali bombings? Imagine if an Australian journalist had hacked into the victims of that just to get personal details from them. I mean, would you like that guy? I don't think you would. And, and, and so, one, one would presume that, over, given this has been going on for years, that the newspaper would have the, the record of, of, well, hundreds, maybe even thousands of tapes and, and records of what was going on. Do you think they would still have them? And would uh, police be able to access them, do you think? Yeah, good question, actually, because um, when I started uh, at the News of the World, the golden rule was if you ever had a conversation with anyone that was in any way significant, not just a star, but anyone involved in a story, you had to tape record it. I mean, I came to work with a passport, a credit card and a tape recorder in here. Um, uh, more often than not, using it surreptitiously. So, um, when I moved up to being uh, Deputy Features Editor, the first thing I did, I rang the PIs, uh, have I said this already? I can't remember, it's been a long day, uh, that we were paying like two, four thousand pounds a week to, to ask, can I hear the tapes of your blags? Uh, when they were trying to blag a pin code for, you know, you have to tap in a pin code to access someone's messages. Um, and some of the blags were simply atrocious. One of the PIs was an ex Hells Angel. Another of the PIs we used was, you know, this guy, Glenn Mulcair, a failed professional footballer. I mean, why are we paying these people so much money to do a job so badly? And, you know, what a mess they have made of it. Um, and, and, you, and you, of course, you're also paying the police. Uh, indeed, that's not quite as uh, widespread as imagined. I mean, it... There's just kind of a historical precedent to that. I know that it became illegal in 1901 in the UK. I don't know what happened in Australia. I imagine it's illegal there also. Um, but throughout the 70s, the flying squad, you know, the Sweeney, if you like, um, were well known for taking money uh, regularly. Uh, and, it, you know, sometimes maybe dangling a carrot in front of a police officer and it could be, I mean, the most amount of money I ever paid to anyone for a story in cash was 30,000 quid in two carrier bags. And that's quite a big carrot if, uh, you know, you're a copper and you wouldn't normally uh, speak to the press. But let's say you so, might Sorry, you say to, you, um, you paid a policeman 30,000 pounds? No, no, I paid someone who was uh, looking after someone's security uh, who wasn't at that time well it doesn't really matter I've actually been told not to talk about specifics in case I implicate myself but that was the kind of money that was available for good good stories uh, and you know the best story of all uh, throughout the 90s until she died was Princess Diana and uh, I mean I knew and we knew the features desk at the News of the World knew uh, you know where she was going which plane she was going to catch who what guy she was with uh, bef you know, we knew her itinerary before she did, and sh her bodyguards were made up of, you know, kind of military MI5 types, uh, policemen, and the odd private uh, person. And with that kind of money available in cash or to be paid in a sort of really roundabout route so the person involved wouldn't get, you know, fingered, um, you know. It's, we, you get some really good information and um, you get some good scoops too. Um, so in a sense, I mean, we didn't, uh, you know, chase Diana or hound her to a death. We knew where she was going anyway. Um, so, uh, Paul McMullen, just, just right. finally, can I get your tip? This, uh, this weekend will be the News of the World's final edition. What's your tip for the front page? Um, <laughs> we're sorry, bye. Uh, God, I don't know. Um, uh, see you next week called The Sun on Sunday, possibly. And, and what are your plans? Uh, I don't know, might leave the country, might go to Australia, start up a news, news agency and tell everyone how to hack into phones over there. Paul McMullen, former News of the World Paul, executive, thanks very much for your time. All right, cheers. Well, I